The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Well, I suspect that maybe you're a little bit like me and uh, it has been a particular joy in this shut-in season to receive Christmas cards from far and near. Reading them has, has made us feel less alone. Uh, and I have liked hearing how people are getting through this strange year. One, one of my favorite uh, headings, uh, a, a woman wrote, how we coped in 2020. <laughs> And people talked about how they cope. They talked about FaceTiming with family, of course. Pets have been important. Nature has been important. Church on Zoom and, and video. Some mentioned acts of kindness and mercy. Two of uh, my favorite coping skills have been music and poetry. And so it was my great delight that today's gospel, the prologue to John, is a kind of ancient poem or hymn, actually. So today, after having been soaked in the earthbound Christmas story of Jesus' birth for some time with donkeys and shepherds and a baby, today we approach the incarnation in a new way with words of beauty and mystery that, conf that convey a timelessness as, as far away as interstellar space dwelling with the first syllable of recorded time. And that's exactly what John had in mind, that we be carried back through salvation history to the beginning of the beginning of, of, of everything in the beginning, he writes, was the word. We tend to think of our religion, Christianity, as beginning with the birth of Jesus, of course. But in truth, our heritage is Judeo-Christian, and we trace it back to the Old Testament 
the Hebrew Bible. We trace it back before Abraham and Noah and even, even Adam and Eve back to those first words in the Bible. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It is no accident that today's gospel starts with those same, same words as in Genesis, in the beginning, because it is John's intention that we understand that the birth in Bethlehem was actually not the true origin of Jesus, just the bodily one. Rather, as John says, Jesus as word existed way back then, both with and as part of God, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. Well, if calling Jesus word is confusing and mysterious as it is, so be it. That is the kind of language theologians and poets use to try to explain an unexplainable truth a truth we may struggle to comprehend. And so as with most poetry and mysteries, we are invited to read and cherish this passage, this poem over and over. And as Christians, we do that year after year on the Sunday after Christmas. We dwell in the eternal mystery of Jesus until, until Epiphany when we move back to the historical story of Jesus, beginning with his baptism in the River Jordan. In this lovely prologue of John, this is the line that calls to me. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. And I was delighted to see that those words were on the beautiful St. Mary's Christmas card with a lovely photo of our church. Well, it strikes me that through the age, ages of salvation history, there were actually plenty of opportunities for the darkness to overcome the light. Amazingly, the darkness was not able to overcome humankind when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, nor at Abel's death at the hand of his je jealous brother Cain. The darkness did not overcome the light when Joseph's brothers threw him into the pit and sold him into slavery in Egypt. God's light prevailed even as Pharaoh murdered all the Hebrew baby boys in Moses' time and as Moses led the people through the wilderness. And down through the rest of the Hebrew Bible, as corrupt leaders stoned the prophets, and when the Hebrew people were carried weeping away from Israel into Babylon. And we know the light was still shining at the birth of Jesus, who brought yet brighter light into the world. Nothing was able to overcome the light even then, even with the, the beheading of John the Baptist, and finally, the crucifixion of our beloved Jesus. The light was God's promise then, and it comes down to us, that the light shines in the darkness and nothing, nothing can overcome it. <clears throat> Even before COVID, we have all had hard times in our lives when it seemed that nothing could ever be good again. Maybe when we look back at those times, we wonder how we got through. And, and then maybe we remember that little by little, the darkness faded and we found a way to abide with our loss. I wonder if, stay muted, you would say this beautiful line with me, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Today is the third day of Christmas, and as we stand on the edge of a brand new year, one that seems, well, how does it seem? I think it seems uncertain. We stand secure in the knowledge of God's love. We live confident in the promise that light is stronger than darkness, 
that love is stronger than hate and that life is stronger than death. Amen.